Hey guys, welcome to lecture three for intro to backend development. This week we're going to be talking about relational databases. So as a review, let's remember what client server communication looks like. When the client wants to retrieve data or manipulate data in some way, it will create a request to the server. The server will then process the request. It will find out which route is triggered, perform corresponding data operations, and then once that's done, return some sort of response. Remember in data operations, that means manipulating data within a database. So the server will run some sort of SQL commands and then the database will return data that's been updated or deleted or whatnot. Then once the server is done processing the data, it will return a response to the client. So this is what the whole timeline looks like. First, request from client to server. Then the server will ask the database through SQL commands to do something relating to data. Then the database will return the data back to the server, which will then process the data and then return it to the client in the form of a response. So, so far we've only interacted with single table databases. So as a quick reminder, table structure information into rows and columns, just like what you would expect in an Excel sheet. And columns represent a field with a defined type and rows represent a collection of column values. So like an entry in a table. And we can query and manipulate data with SQL. Let's talk about relational databases. So what happens when we want more than one data within a database? And as the name implies, relational databases allow relationships between data. So does that mean um, in the context of what we've been doing so far, you know, which comments belong to which post, which friends are users with each other, or which users are friends with each other, and which transactions relate to which senders and receivers? So what we're saying here is that we have different types of data. How are we relating them to each other? Not just one type of data that's interacting with itself, but say like users and comments or users and posts. So let's take a look at what this might look like. How exactly are we going to form these relationships in our database? Say we have a user table and a post table. User table has stuff like ID and name, Post table has ID and text. And we know that users can create posts, right? So then we might want to put something in our table here in the post table that points to the author of the post, right? So for example, we say that the post with ID one, welcome to my blog, is written by the author with ID two, who is Jane. So this is what's known as a foreign key. That previous author column is a foreign key column. So foreign key is a column in one table that uniquely identifies a specific row. So this can be within the same table or a different one. And also this is called a secondary key. They're pretty much interchangeable. So the author field in the post table refers to a user ID belonging to a user row. So the foreign key column indicates a relationship between the two. Let's talk about a couple of different relationship types though. We can have one-to-one, -one, one to many, or many-to-many. -many. So one-to-one -one means row X in table A refers to one and only one row Y in table B, and vice versa. Row Y in table B refers to one and only one row X in table A. So what does that mean? That really means one row is a unique identifier for another row in another table. And that example here is students and net IDs, right? Because each student has only one net ID, but each net ID can only belong to one student. We have a little diagram here that just shows like each row in one table can only be associated with a row in another table. So what's a, another example of this? Say we have users and profiles for whatever reason, if we want to keep profiles separate from users because profiles have like some sensitive information that we don't want to necessarily be directly put in the user table, we can have this. So you can see that the user table has an ID and name while the profile table has ID status and it refers 
to the user ID that the profile is associated with. Because each user is only going to have one profile, and each profile is going to only be associated with one user. So we can see here that ID 40 for our profile, the status is away, and it's associated with user 10, which is John. And why do we use IDs as um, one of our foreign keys? Well, as you know, IDs are unique, right? You can only have one ID, um, like the same value in each table. So we can have a lot of people named John, right? But we're only going to have one person with ID 10. Same thing here, we can have profile 30 with status online associated with user ID 20, who's Jane. How would we write that out in SQL? So we have our normal create table uh, user and profile. And to create the foreign key column, first we define the column itself, right? So what exactly is the data type of foreign of the user ID column? It's just an integer. And we want to say it's unique because again, this is one-to-one. -one. We can't have, um, you know, two profiles pointing to the same user ID. So we have to say that the user ID column is unique and we have to mark it as a foreign key. So that's what this green part is doing, foreign key user ID references. And then what is this user ID actually pointing to? It's pointing to the ID column in the user table, which is what user parentheses ID stands for. So when we want to insert, uh, these values into our new tables, we can insert, you know, a new user whose name is John. And then when we want to create a profile, uh, we have to put the status, but then we also have to put um, which user that this profile is associated with, which is one, which is presumably who John is. Okay, next we have one to many relationships. So as the name implies, one row X in table A refers to many rows in Y1, Y2, blah, in table B. And one row in table B can only refer to one row X in table A. So this is the classic that we've seen in our previous demos with posts and comments, right? Because each post can have a ton of comments. If it's Reddit, it can have like tens and tens of thousands of comments, but each comment can only belong to one post, right? You can't have one comment appear on like the exact same comment on multiple posts. So what does that look like? Let's have an example with songs and albums. So say we have these albums with a name and then we have songs in our song table with the name and album ID. We can see here that in the song table, we have two songs that are associated with album with ID 10. So the song Earthquake and song I Think is part of the album Igor. Same thing down below, we have 44 or 444 and Moonlight pointing towards album ID 20, which is 444. And you can see here that mm, there aren't albums uh, there's, there's no like foreign key in the album table. It's just in the song table. So that means that you can have many, many songs, uh, referring to the same album ID, but you can't do the same with albums to songs. So what does this look like in SQL? It's actually very similar to the one to one to one. In fact, the only difference is that instead of forcing our album ID column to be unique, we're saying it doesn't have to be unique anymore. You can have a lot of songs pointing towards one album. So we just wanna say that it's not null. You have to have a value there, but it's okay if it's a repeat. And then um, inserting into the song is pretty similar. You insert the name and then our album ID. And so what's really nice about this is now that it's very, very simple to query songs that are associated with one album. So here's the SQL query here, select all from song where the album ID is 10. So if we go back here, now that would give us earthquake and I think. That's the beauty of foreign keys. 
finally, we have many-to-many -many relationships. So this is the most complicated one, and you'll find it pretty pretty often. So, you know, row X in table A refers to many rows in table B, and vice versa, row Y in table B refers to many rows in table A. So our classic example here is posts and hashtags. Um, each post can have many hashtags, right? You can have a post and you can hashtag it, hashtag foodie, hashtag pancakes, whatever. But then if you click on a hashtag, right, each hashtag is going to be associated with a lot of posts. If you click on hashtag pancakes, you're gonna see tons and tons of photos of pancakes. So how do we implement this? Let's take a, take a look at some possible choices that you might think of immediately if someone told you like, please implement many to many relationships. Um, so the first two are not ideal uh, for reasons I'm gonna explain. Uh, we could have multiple columns to store more foreign keys instead of just like one album ID column. We can now have like album ID one, album ID two, blah. Um, and we can have a single column to store a list of IDs if we wanted to, which is also not great. And finally, we can have a join table, which is our accepted way of doing it, and we'll tell you what it is. Okay, so let's say we have a student table here, and each person, right, can enroll in many different courses. Um, if we wanted to represent this with multiple courses as multiple columns, then we would have something like course one, course two, course three. But of course, that would only actually allow you to take three classes, right? We don't have a course four column. So how are you gonna take more than three classes? Um, what happens if a student wants more than three courses? Well, we could keep adding just more columns, but eventually you get to the point where, you know, it's just kind of a waste of space. Like say that our student with the most courses, say someone's taking like eight courses, how many people at school are actually going to be taking eight courses? Maybe it's like that one crazy dude. Now everybody else, you know, maybe is taking at most six courses and that seventh and eighth column are completely empty except for that one student. So you can see how this is kind of like a waste of space. You can really be using that data for something else. It's just not efficient. Okay, so what if instead our courses is actually just a list of course IDs? And same thing in the course table, instead of referring to one student ID, it's now a list of student IDs. Now, at first this seems pretty good, right? Say you're looking at student with ID one and they're taking 1110 and 1998, you go to the courses table and you can easily get the information associated with each course. Same thing for students here. Um, you can say, uh, for course 1110, there are students one and two taking it, then you can go to the student table and get that information. So doesn't seem too bad, but the issue arises when we start adding more entries in the student table or the course table. Say we add student three and we enroll them in 1110 and 1998. Now we actually have to go to the course table and for each class that student three is enrolled in, we have to go ahead and update their students list, right? Because it has to be consistent. So now student three, um, you go to 1110 and 1998, we have to go ahead and update their corresponding students so that 1110 is students one, two, and three, and then 1998 is students one and three. Now you can see how that starts to get pretty um, extensive after, if you have say like students rolled in lots of courses or vice versa, especially like courses, right? If you have like 300 people enrolling in one course, then you have to update the student table for each one of those students enrolled in that course. And that can get really slow, really fast. Um, because for every operation you're doing by like adding a new student, you're actually doing like tons of other operations. So what is our actual solution here? Um, because we don't want to use the list uh, anymore. We can create what's called a join table instead. You can think of the join table as like a bridge between the student table and the course table. So let me show you why this is really effective. 
Student table, let's say we're looking at student one and we want to see what courses student one is enrolled in. We can go to the join table, which is just two columns, one, the student ID and two, the course ID. Then we can look for all the rows that are associated with the student ID one. And then we look at the courses, right? So student one we can see is uh, enrolled in 1110 and 1998 because there are two rows associated with student ID one that have those values. Then if we wanted to get more information about those courses, we can hop on over to the course table, which is 1110 and 1998, and then get all that value. And the nice thing is that we can do the reverse direction as well. If we have uh, course uh, 1110 and we want to see all the students in 1110, we just go to the join table look at all the rows where the course ID is 1110, get the corresponding student IDs, and then hop on over to the student table that we can get the data as needed. So you can see this is really efficient. And the nice thing is that when you add new entries, you don't have to go and update a ton of other entries. It's you know self-explained right there. If you wanna say student two is enrolled in course 1998, there you go. You don't have to go and update the student table or the course table. It's right there in the join table. So what does this look like in SQL? Uh, first, let's create our student and course uh, tables here as usual. And then our join table will now just be, so the join table will have an ID it's of its own. It doesn't have to, uh, but we just put it there for now. And of course that has the course ID and the student ID. And both the course ID column and the student ID column uh, have to be foreign keys that reference the course ID and student ID uh, respectively, right? So you can see foreign key course ID references the ID column of the course table, which is what that last term is saying. Same thing with student ID, foreign key student ID references the ID column of the student table. And uh, you notice that course ID and student ID are not null. We have to enforce that. It doesn't make sense if you have a student ID that's associated with like no course. Uh, if that's the case, then we just wouldn't have an entry in the join table at all. Okay, so that's the end of this lecture. Hopefully it's helpful and I highly recommend you watch the corresponding demo with this week's lecture. It's really helpful and will help you get started with your new relational database powers.